Thanks for joining Cebo Digital TV, where we cover all things related to digital assets. I'm John Palmer, president of Cebo Digital, and I'm joined here today with Mike Higgins from Hidden Road Partners. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. So Mike, if you could explain your um, involvement in Hidden Road Partners and then also where Hidden Road falls into the ecosystem of uh, finance. Sure. Um, I'm the global head of business development at Hidden Road, based in London. Uh, prior to joining Hidden Road, I spent just shy of 20 years in electronic trading, uh, multi-asset and a bulk of that in, in foreign exchange. Um, so what is Hidden Road? We are a multi-asset prime broker and clearing firm that was set up and funded by the buy side. Uh, over the last five years, we've set up a series of entities around the world, worked hard with local regulators to get those entities regulated. In parallel, we wrote a horizontal clearing infrastructure using modern technologies and techniques from kind of high frequency trading and bolted that into a clearing business. Uh, that's important as it allows us to have a holistic view of the counterparty's uh, risk cross asset cross product. Specifically for digital, our counterparties came to us to build a digital prime brokerage just shy of two years ago. And so the goal of that is to help remove counterparty credit risk uh, and provide a capital and cost efficient way for institutions to access this market. Fantastic. Thanks for that. You guys have certainly been busy uh, over the last couple of years. Absolutely. So can you talk to me a little bit about what type of demand you're seeing across your entire businesses, you know, whether it's the traditional finance asset classes and then, and then specifically in digital, and if you're seeing anything different in digital? Absolutely. Um, so across the clearing landscape, there is a need for a multi-asset prime broker and clearing firm to help provide you know, that offset between uh, different asset classes. Uh, but specifically on the digital side, we are seeing a strong demand for really institutional grade uh, infrastructure. Uh, but before describing that, I think it'd be worth describing some of the motivating factors to that. So the first one is that there was credit risk in the system um, that wasn't being valued at price. The second was there were major challenges around the vertical integration of some of these exchanges for institutions to face. And so two observations um, as of late. Um, the first is that counterparties are now looking to price that counterparty risk. They're doing that on the run, which is, which is difficult. Um, so what do we know? We know that the price, uh, the previous price, perhaps pre-FTX, was, was near zero um, as counterparties were willing to pay very little to hedge that risk. We now know that the price is not zero, um, but it will take the industry some time to figure out what that is. And unfortunately, until we do that, uh, there'll be some limitations on, on how much the institutions can scale from here. The second observation is what we've just went through in crypto is not unique to crypto. You know, the same thing happened in 2008. If you asked folks um, if they thought it was conceivable that Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, AIG, Wachovia would all simultaneously default on a trillion dollars of net liabilities, I think, John, the answer you'd get is not in my lifetime or there or thereabouts. Um, and so when repricing occurs, it tends to happen suddenly and usually in the, the lack of, uh, of good information. Um, and it takes a long time. If you think, you know, after 2008, it took a long time for the market to price, you know, take, understand the price of Goldman and Citibank. And so I think we're at the same phase um, now. But really back to your question around the infrastructure and the products, um, we need to separate the function of trading from the function of asset holding and collateralization. And if we do that, it'll lead to best practices across both disciplines. And so really it's that separation of church and state. And so you end up with a series of service providers like you have in TradFi. Um, you have custodians that hold assets. You have exchanges that run matching engines and provide matching services. You have market makers that are there to efficiently transfer risk. And you have prime brokers and credit providers to help allow institutions to scale across the ecosystem, again, in a capital and, and cost efficient way. Fantastic, Mike, thanks for that. You mentioned something really important comparing TradFi and the digital market structures, and, and that's this concept of, of a horizontal if, um, marketplace and market structure versus a vertical. And, and in crypto, we've seen a lot of entities, a lot of platforms vertically integrate where some of the, the parties that you mentioned, whether it's market making, clearing, prime brokerage, trading, um, are all under the same platform or entity versus in traditional finance, we don't see that. Can you explain a little bit of what Hidden Road is seeing in that and whether you think we need to move to a more um, horizontal approach and, and potentially how the industry could do that? I think that's right for, for institutions. Yeah, institutions are creatures of habit, probably for the right reason. 
Part of the reason TradFi is more horizontally built is over years of making similar mistakes and regulators coming in, we've, we've separated these things out. And so we think, again, it comes down to separating trading from asset holding and collateralization. Um, and so that will require the ecosystem to work together. And so custodians will need to work with exchanges, will need to work with prime brokers, and certainly the market participants themselves. I think on top of that, um, for this to scale as an asset class, we need to do very simple things. Uh, we need to be transparent. We need to get audited. We need to get regulated. We should embrace those things. Um, there's going to be some bumps in the road, and so you know, buckle up. Um, but I do think that digital is here to stay, and, and the industry will build out that horizontal nature that, that is, uh, that's important. No, that's great. I think a really great perspective there. And, and of course, SIBO Digital, we, we share that perspective in the sense that, you know, we do clearing and exchange trading and that's it. And um, that horizontal approach has kind of been the tenants in which we've, you know, we stood up our platform for. So can you touch on what Hidden Roads is seeing in respect to regulation in the U.S. versus overseas and also what you're hearing from your customers and how those environments are shaping up? Sure. Um, so I think regulation is certainly in demand by the, the entire industry. Um, we think that regulation will provide the certainty that institutions need to properly adopt uh, digital as an asset class. Um, I think the key is that regulators engage industry players uh, like yourselves to really understand the various trading strategies, the technologies and the nuances to the blockchain. Um, our fear is a little bit that we try to shoehorn crypto into perhaps existing TradFi regs that may not be the best opportunity when we have the opportunity to create something unique. So that engagement between the industry and the regulators is crucial. Um, now, as for you know, where that gets regulated, in the U.S. there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, in other jurisdictions, like in the UK, uh, Hidden Road has an, FC, uh, an FCA entity. Uh, we've had a derivatives license for a while, and we were recently approved um, to do the spot side under AML D5. And so given we have that regulation, we're seeing strong demand for our counterparties that we service, which are non-US, to face that regulated entity because it provides, again, that transparency, audited financials, um, you know, and the infrastructure that comes with, with regulations. Oh, that's great. I appreciate it for that color. And, and so one of the, one of the, the big pieces of the business obviously is, is lending. And certainly with the FTX events, we've seen an incredible um, tightening per se of, of lending within digital. So can you speak to what you're seeing and, and what Hidden Road is doing to try to help solve that problem as sure. we go forward? I think when we look back, unsecured lending is going to be one of the biggest reasons that we find ourselves in the current situation. Um, and so I think one of the ways to solve liquidity is to allow third party capital to enter the market as intermediaries and, and leverage providers like you have in TradFi. Um, in order to do that, the infrastructure we've been describing needs to be in place. Credit providers like prime brokers are experts at underwriting counterparty credit risk, managing liquidity, pricing term liquidity, and setting appropriate venues, uh, limits on venues, excuse me. And so if the infrastructure is in place, these names can come in and provide the capital in size. Um, and so I think that's one of the ways that will help scale this going forward. Oh, that's great, I appreciate it. Well, what's next for Hidden Road and, and what do you wanna leave with our viewers? We are still building out a global clearing business. Uh, we have the infrastructure, we have the capital structure behind us to do that. We you know, are embracing regulations and working with those folks. Uh, we listen to what our clients and our channel partners uh, are building. And so you know, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to a strong 2023 um, and, and leave 2022 in the, in the rear view mirror. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot. We definitely agree with you on that and, and, and looking forward to the continued building in 2023. So thanks for joining again and, and look forward to seeing you. Thanks for having me, John.